two guys on defense whose names are not the biggest. They were not the highest rated recruits. They are not the flashiest players, but are going to be potentially integral to Oregon's defensive success this year. Amarion Winston and Solomon Davis. So when I've been talking on this show about pop candidates in 2024, guys that were on the team last year that are going to have a bigger role statistically this season, these are two names that got submitted. I think Solomon's name was uh, sent to me by his dad. I, I think I am not. I'm not sure and was not able to to confirm that. But Solomon Davis is the first name that I want to talk about here because reportedly this is a guy who is making the transition from corner to safety. And that makes a lot of sense. Throughout spring football, I mentioned several times on the show that number one, the safety room was thin, which is why they were looking at guys like Jacoby Matthews from Texas A&M and why they'd added uh, guys like Kobe Savage or Brandon Johnson via the transfer portal this offseason from Kansas State and Duke, respectively. But still, the back end safety position, not so much the nickel spot, but the back end safety, your free and strong safety or boundary and field safety, however you want to refer to them, it was a little thin relative to the rest of the roster, especially the secondary. You just had a bunch of corners. I mean, a lot of corners. You had Sione Laulea, number one Juco corner, Cam Alexander coming in, and those guys appear most likely to be depth pieces on the perimeter for Oregon defensively because I think your number one corner is likely Jabbar Muhammad. He'll never come off the field unless he's injured or loses his helmet for a play. And your number two corner is probably Jaleel Florence again, who was good last year for the Ducks. And assuming he comes back off of an injury, is probably poised for a really, really strong season. And I think he'd be the outside corner there. So there were a lot of guys there. And uh, what, what I'd heard is that Solomon Davis was making the switch to safety. And if so, then he will absolutely be a pop candidate for 2024. He only played in two games last year. He utilized a red shirt and... This was not a guy who was super heralded coming out of high school. He was actually recruited and, and listed on 24-7 sports as an athlete. Not as a corner, not as a saved as an athlete. Why? Because in high school, he's a three-star guy coming out. He played in the state of California. He was a running back, he was a receiver, and he was a corner. This is giving me just major, just that little snapshot alone. He's a little bit bigger than the guy I'm thinking of. Major Charles Nelson vibes. Major, major Charles Nelson vibes. And consider me a member of the Charles Nelson fan club because I really, really liked watching him play football. He was a receiver. He lined up in the backfield every now and then. And Oregon had a need on defense. And so they moved him over and played safety. And he did really well. He did really well. So if Davis makes that switch to safety and the staff likes what they see from him, the opportunity to play, at the very least, find your way onto the depth chart, it's going to be there. It, it is absolutely going to be there. And, you know, you, you, you look at recruiting rankings, as I have many a times on the show and will continue to do on, on this show, because they do matter. They do not mean everything. And the reason that I mentioned earlier that Solomon Davis is a guy that doesn't get a ton of attention, I think, amongst the Oregon fan base, is in 2023, he was the sixth lowest rated recruit in the entire cycle. He wasn't one of the guys who was at the top of the class when you go look at Oregon 2023 commits. He wasn't there. But that doesn't mean he wasn't a talented guy. TJ Bass, once upon a time, wasn't near the top of Oregon's recruiting class. Neither was Marcus Harper. They both went on at the offensive line, and Harper's going on now his third year starting at left guard for the Ducks this season. They went on to have fantastic careers, and you can find gems throughout recruiting classes all over the place. And it, it's easy to fall in love with the guys that have more stars or have a higher composite rating, but just about every recruiting class, not all of them, you, you find guys closer to the bottom that you look back and go, boy, I feel like he might have been a little underrated. Or wh why, did, why was he rated there? This guy was rated up here. He didn't even play. He transferred out. And that guy, that guy who wasn't supposed to be as good, turned out to be the better player and have a great career. So Solomon Davis could absolutely be that sort of guy. Does not have a ton of experience. Only played against Portland State and Hawaii last year. But he's not going up against a room of guys with mountains of experience. Because if you figure your two starting 
deep safeties are Tysheem Johnson and Kobe Savage. The guys backing them up are some combination of Peyton Woodyard, that's a true freshman, Aaron Flowers, that's a true freshman, Tyler Turner, that's a redshirt freshman. <laughs> that's, the, that's the group. That's that that's the group that's on the two deep there. And if you suffer an injury to either Tysheem or uh, to Kobe Savage, Suddenly, you need one of those guys when you're playing Ohio State or Michigan or Washington or Wisconsin or any of the tough games on Oregon's schedule. So I think Solomon Davis could absolutely be a guy that sees a larger role than he had a year ago. Not a super high bar to cross, but I think he's someone who name-wise doesn't have as much recognition, flies under the radar, but he's playing at a position group where there just isn't an insane amount of depth. Now, obviously, I hope Oregon stays fully healthy and Davis is able to be more of a, a rotational guy, which you know is probably how the staff views him making that position change. But maybe they're moving him over there because they think this guy could push to be a starter. I mean, he was supremely active in the spring game. Pretty sure he had like seven tackles. He was all over the place. So that's a name to watch for. And then Amarion Winston. Last year, playing at, at that edge spot as a redshirt freshman, 19 tackles, half a tackle for loss, no sacks, did not have a single game in which he had more than three tackles. That was his season high. I think when you take Mace Funa out of the equation, Amarion Winston is the dude. He, he doesn't look to me as someone that is a high-end prolific pass rusher, but is really solid against the run and is just a good, solid football player that holds his own. That's kind of where Mace Funa was. He, he never developed into an elite pass rusher, but made a lot of plays against the run, especially over the last couple of years. I think Amarion Winston can move into that role. So, that's a guy who I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a, a, a sack this year, which he did not have one. I wouldn't be surprised if he picks up a couple tackles for loss. But mostly, I'm looking at that tackles total. 19 on the season, never more than three in a game. He played in all 14 games for the Ducks last year. So he's, he's seeing the field. He's working his way into that defensive line rotation. I bet he pushes for over 30 tackles and has multiple tackles for loss. And who knows? Maybe he's in there in a pass rushing spot. I think that's going to be pretty tricky, though, because... You have just an elite lineup of pass rush specific guys like Mateo Uyunglele and Blake Purchase and Tatum Tuioti, who you know did more of that a season ago, and you figure would be stronger candidates to do that uh, going into this season. But those are the two guys defensively that I think Oregon fans have got to be aware of: Solomon Davis, Amarion Winston. They will see the field. They won't always be making the biggest impact. They won't always be the splashiest guys out there, but they will be impact players. You ever hear the phrase, special teams, special plays, special players? Let's focus on the first one of those lines. Special teams, coming up next. <laughs> 